Now, Robin Wright is a contributing writer for The New Yorker and a fellow with the Woodrow Wilson International Centre for Scholars. She joins me now from Washington, D.C. Uh, good to see you again, Robin. I mean, there, uh, let's, let's start with the big picture. There are these clashes on the northern border with Lebanon, uh, the U.S. increasing its force posture in the region, Iran warning of regional spread. Um, you know, Iran has a vested interest in the propaganda game. But what, what is the risk of all of this metastasizing into a regional conflict? There's a very real danger, and that's reflected in the kind of language you've seen from the White House, the State Department, and the Pentagon over the last couple of days. The deployment of two carrier battle groups into the Eastern Mediterranean also shows that the United States is willing to flex its muscle to show or to signal that it is willing to act in the event of a wider war. At the moment, the kind of tensions have been playing out among Iran's proxies in targeting whether it's firing uh, drones and missiles at Israel from Yemen, uh, uh, firing at two U.S. Uh, deployments in eastern Syria, a deployment in two places in, in northern Iraq where the United States troops are based, uh, and of course what's happening on the northern border of Israel with the uh, attacks from Iran's biggest proxy, Hezbollah. Mm. So there is a real danger that Iran is not just probing but looking for something bigger. But again, we are at that kind of precipice, the cusp of something bigger. We're not there yet. Yeah. And I think the kind of diplomacy we're seeing is trying to prevent that. Yeah, good point. I, I wanted to ask you too, nearly 100 Palestinians have been killed in the occupied West Bank uh, since this began. Dozens more arrested in Israeli raids. Uh, are, are the risks of West Bank escalation increasing? East Jerusalem, and what would that do to this conflict? Absolutely. The passions and furies uh, among all parties are growing with each day. And the, the real danger is that the Palestinians in the West Bank turn against the Palestinian Authority government and that in the process of taking on uh, Hamas in Gaza, that uh, the Israelis also lose the option of talking uh, to the leadership in the West Bank because they become increasingly unpopular uh, at home. So they're, they're, the repercussions of all this play out both uh, locally and regionally. Mm, mm. Uh, uh, can Israel's, uh, you know, its short term strategy, I guess, in Gaza be successful long term without a political path for Palestinians, a path for some level of self-determination, autonomy? Without that, won't the next Hamas just be around the corner if this one is wiped out as Israel promises? Michael, that's the most important bottom line of this conflict, and that is Israel can absolutely make military progress against Hamas in eliminating command posts, arsenals, and leadership. But the question is, who rules Hamas, uh, what happens next, and how do you prevent the creation of yet another militant group, not immediately, but down the road, because there are no political alternatives. Wars do not end militarily ever. There is always a political outcome. It's been true of any major war that has ended. Otherwise, wars simply beget more wars.